Hi folks and welcome back. In today's video we're going to draw some simple waveguide structures to create photonic circuits in Blender. The basic geometries of waveguides in photonic circuits are relatively primitive, so I won't show how to draw many specific examples, but here I'll just walk through a general workflow to be able to create some. Go ahead and add a mesh cube and scale him down to create yourself a substrate. Add a curved path, and this is going to define the path of one of our waveguides. Tab into edit mode, come to segments and subdivide to give yourself enough vertices on that curve. Now all you want to do is manipulate the shape of this curve to create waveguide structures. Let's go ahead and add directional couplers at two sections along this curve. I'll select some of the vertices and then press G and Y to move them outwards. Select the transition vertices, S, lock it in the X direction and zero. I'm going to repeat that for all of these other vertices. Open up a new tab and open geometry nodes and give this curve a new node tree. Add a curve to mesh node, enable fill caps and in the profile curve, look for a quadrilateral curve and then connect out the width and the height to a single input value. Come to the modifiers tab and let's drop the width down to something smaller like 0.05. You can either leave the shading as smooth like this or you can also add a set shade smooth node, drop it in, untick shade smooth. Let's reposition it so that it sits on our substrate. So that could be, for example, the first of many waveguides. If you have, for example, symmetrical features, so you have the same waveguide just mirrored along the x-axis, you could, for example, add a transform geometry node, rotate the whole structure by 180 degrees in the x-axis, add a join geometry node, and connect the rotated waveguide with the unrotated waveguide, and use the offset. Here, we want the offset in the x direction to precisely control the spacing, for example, between the directional coupler regions. Let's go ahead and add a material, add a set material node, come down to the material properties and create a new material. Let's call it waveguide and select waveguide in the set material. I'm going to also create a material for the substrate, give it a metallic rough material with a dark color, something slightly dark bluey. I'm working entirely in cycles right now, but if you're working in EV, make sure that you have the usual settings of ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections enabled. I'm going to create for myself a transparent glass light material for the waveguide. So let's come to the waveguide and just turn up the transmission on the waveguide material. If you want it to be fancy, you can have the option to mirror toggled on and off. You could simply add a switch node, put the current input of combined rotated and unrotated waveguide into the true option, and the option of the unrotated, just the unrotated into the false. From the switch input, look for group input, and to open that up, and let's call this mirror. And so now in the geometry nodes modifier, I have the option to toggle mirror on and off. I can also output the parameter for the spacing, add a combine XYZ to the translation for the transform geometry we added earlier. From the Y input socket, again, look for group input, and let's name this value separation. So now we have a custom mirror operation going. Of course, there is a mirror modifier available in the modifier stack already. You can use this, but I like to just code this up myself in geometry nodes anyway. Let's say I actually want to draw some pulses of light that traverse the waveguide. To do that, I'm going to add a resample curve node at the beginning, set the count to something high, let's say 200, add a store named attribute node, a spline parameter node, compare node, and a blur attribute node. You can use either the factor or the index of the spline. I'm going to use the index and set it to integer equal to and plug the index into the upper socket, take the result and plug it into the blur attribute, leave it at float, and plug the whole thing into the value socket of the store named attribute. Create yourself a new name, for example, pulse position. And we're going to use this pulse position attribute to position a glowing pulse. Let's open up the shader editor, and with the waveguide material selected, you want to look for a attribute node, a mix shader, and in the attribute node, let's look for that attribute we just stored, pulse position. Now, if I view this with node wrangle enabled, come to geometry nodes, and I toggle through the equals value in the compare node, you can see that we now have a bright region that we can sort of make move throughout the waveguide. And we're going to use this as a mask to put a emissive bright material here. Drop the mix shader and make sure that the attribute is plugged into the factor. Take our main waveguide material and plug that into the zero socket. So the first socket in the mix shader, go ahead and duplicate that principle SDF, plug it into the second one, and in this one, I'm going to open up the emissions tab, choose a color for whatever color pulse I want, and set the strength to something like, say, 20. So now we have a pulse of light that we can now move around by toggling this equals position value. I can also have this pulse be a bit more smooth and broad by playing with this blur attribute. So if I go ahead and increase the iterations, it'll blur out this pulse. And I can also control the strength of this, this blurring effect by controlling the weight. And so you can change the shape of the pulse that you have. 
So this allows you to create single pulse that you can move. If, for example, you wanted a chain of pulses, you could add a math node in the geometry nodes modifier, set the math node to flawed modulo, and you want to set the compare to equal float, tug the flawed modulo into the upper value. And by toggling the second value, you can add more or less pulses and if you wanted them to move, you could add another math node, drop it between the index and the floor modulo, and just add a value to the index. So we could, for example, put a scene time node, you put it as frames, and if we press play, we can have these pulses being driven along the length of the waveguide. And you can also apply this to other structures, not just basic waveguides. So if you had a, a micro resonator, for example, a ring based structure, you could apply the same process. And that's basically it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like and a comment if you found it useful. Subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye for now.